Hello everybody, welcome to this tutorial on using multiple UV um, channels. The purpose of this tutorial is to show um, the reason why you don't use uh, multiple UV channels and uh, how to go about doing it. So the reason you may want to do it is you may find yourself inside a, uh, a games environment where you need to have your diffuse texture in one channel and then a separate ambient occlusion in a second. Um, to demonstrate what I mean, we could have a, a, a mesh like so. And if we click the edit on its um, unwrapped UVWs here, you can see that I've simply just um, unwrapped this and you know there's nothing really spectacular. You know you'd export this out and you would create your diffuse um, your diffuse touch from that. Now say if this was a rubble uh, pile, you know, these are some bunch of bricks or you know something like that. And instead of um, having to have loads of uh, different, uh, you know, instead of just baking an ambient occlusion just to this one mesh and then trying to make it um, get the same effect, you may want to uh, bake an ambient occlusion with. Uh, loads of different pieces instead of letting, for example, the the engine take on the responsibility of doing a post post process um, ambient occlusion. So, to demonstrate what I mean, I have a, a mesh here that's um, been hidden, and you can see why it's in there. You know, you could just imagine these as um, you know two different pieces of um, concrete or something like that, and it's in, inside some kind of dirt pile. Now, if we were to look at these. The, uh, the rubble for it, for instance, there, you see it's just exactly the same uh, texture layout. And then we also, uh, sorry, UV layout, and we also have this kind of bit of a, a dirt pile here, which has just been quickly um, pelt maps. So, what we'd want to do is we'd want to combine all these and still bake an ambient occlusion while possibly keeping, uh, while keeping the uh, diffuse for each one of these elements separate. So that these uh, meshes can also still be reused within uh, an environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this and I'm going to show you how to, how to do this. So if we were to select this uh, piece of rubble here, for instance, in fact we'll just select it all and move it to the center like this. So if we select it all, convert to edible poly, so it's um, the, the stack has been collapsed. And now if we go to attach and we attach these two pieces you see that these are now all one piece. Um, if we go to unwrap UVW you can see that uh, everything's just basically been overlaid on the top. So what we want to do is to copy these here and the reason I copy them is you can create a second UV channel uh, within this UVW unwrap um, let's just show you how if I went to edit and then set this to 2 here and then click reset uh, the problem is I found that uh, Max can sometimes be quite buggy in this and um, you know I can, it can sometimes, sometimes in my own experience it's destroyed the original UVs so you know what, what I'll do is I'll come out of it and, and the solution I found to, to this is just to basically add a, a second UVW map on here. Set the um, uh, map channel to 2, click reset UVWs and press OK. Now um, at this point we can go to edit and if you remember correctly we just copied the UVs so we can go to edit and paste. Now, what we want to do is we want to give these their own unique um, texture space. Now, because this is a fairly simple mesh, there's a really easy way that we're going to do that. But if you had, say, for example, a more complicated mesh, um, you may want to, you know, manually select these pieces and then move them um, into place. But like I said, because this mesh is um, quite quite a, a simple one, we can basically just select it all. Go to mapping, uh, not mapping, sorry, um, tools and click 
uh, pack UVs. I'm going to take down the space into 0 0.01 so it's more tighter spaced. Um, I'm going to check the rotation of clusters and I'm going to leave this uh, fill holes because there's no holes within the uh, UVs there. So as soon as press OK, you see what it's done. You can see that it has created every single piece of this, its own unique texture space. So now at this point, we can um, bake the uh, UVs out here. So we can go to render, render. Actually, sorry. Now what we need to do is we need to set up the um, ambient occlusion um, material here. So we need to go to render, render setup. Um, we we'll want change the renderer down here from uh, from the assigned renderer to the mental ray one. And we can just uh, close this out. Now, outside the diffuse, I'm going to check the box and go down to ambient occlusion. I'm going to increase the samples to a high value, so I'm going to say 128 for now. Now, you can also mess around with some of these other settings, uh, you know, like the brightness and darkness and spread and the type of occlusion it is and so on and so forth. But for the demonstrations of this uh, uh, this video, I'm not really going to go into that in a moment. So we set this and we can assign this uh, ambient occlusion here. I'm also going to go to lights and go down to standard and choose to add a skylight in here. And we can close the material later now. And now we can go to rendering and this is where we're going to produce our um, ambient occlusion map here. So we can go down to um, render to texture. So where's that? There it is, render to texture. And we can leave the projections off because we're not projecting any high or low, um, uh, high or low uh, ambient occlusions on normal maps or whatever. Now under objects, we have to do what I check this, use existing channel. You see that this, these channels here has just become available, as you see. And it's currently set to channel one. That means that the ambient occlusion is going to be baked um, in the first UV channel. Now, um, if you remember correctly, the uh, first UV channel is where it's all overlapped. So set this to two. Now we're going to go add and we're going to add a complete map. And we just basically need to choose where we're going to save our texture to here. So let's save this inside uh, this. Uh, Rubble, and basically, I'm going to name this Rubble underscore AO. Press OK. I'm going to give this a 1024 resolution, and I'm going to click Render. This may take a few moments to come through. And what we're looking for is any uh, red areas or red spots. And if those are short, that means that there's been some kind of error somewhere. But you see this looks perfectly fine. So what we can now do is we can select the uh, mesh here and where the um, select a new slot. We're going to go to diffuse and we're going to choose the uh, ambient occlusion. And then we can basically see um, what this looks like on the model there. So All right, so we've assigned that, and you can see that it's been assigned in the wrong way. It's been assigned because it thinks that uh, the structure should be inside the uh, UV channel one. So seasonal change just see just change this where it says map channel, it says one. Change it to two, and uh, once you've done that, you should get something that looks like this. So you can see this ambient occlusion has been baked on here. Now, what we can do is we can go to uh, convert to edge poly here, 
and we can detach these objects. So we click detach and detach. That's okay and okay. The thing I'm going to do is just going to recenter its pivot points. Now you see we can add a uh, unwrap UVW, where it's set to 1, and we can add another one. And we can set this to 2, and we can click edit. Let's do that reset to 2, and you can see we've now got the second one on there. And you can also, if you want to, check 1, click reset, press OK, choose edit, and you can see it's now in its uh, original configuration there. So obviously these pieces are now uh, reusable again. And you know you can do that with all these pieces um, if you'd like to. So you could do that with all these and then you could export these as uh, separate pieces. Or you could export this just as one whole piece and then uh, put that in an engine and um, see what you get. But because um, because like I said, you have the original UVs here. We could also change this to a basic texture. You see I've got here. Now you see here that this has been uh, wrongly put on these because this is actually set to UV channel 2. So if we set this to 1, you see that it's actually come up correctly on both of these uh, two pieces of stone. But obviously not here. I don't really have no texture for that. So, you know, with uh, that said, I uh, hope this helps and I'll see you in the next tutorial where I'll probably cover how to import these uh, meshes into a game engine and to set up the uh, multiple UVs inside there. So I uh, hope this helps and uh, I'll see you next time.